Hello and welcome. I'm here at Dickinson State University to learn more about a program called Alcohol Awareness Through the Arts. It's a program that takes a rather unique approach to the issue of student drinking. Patty Carr, the artistic director of the program, will tell us more about it. We're also joined by four students who are involved in different ways with the program. The students joining me here are Shane Bennett, Jordan Dupuy, Ashley McGelkey, and Amanda Leftridge. Thank you all for joining me here. And of course, we have an auditorium full of Dickinson State students, so if you want to applaud or let the folks listening on the radio know you're here, that's just fine. Why don't you go ahead. Okay, Patty, why don't you tell us a little bit about the program and how it came into being? Really, the, the, the whole process, the whole program started when we had a, a rival school that lost two football players on the same weekend, one to uh, drunk driving and one to alcohol toxicity. And at that time, uh, we have a, a dance, we have a, we have a formal dance program at Dickinson State University, and we also have, uh, out of that, a, a performance company, and at the time, we had six defensive starters in the, in the fo football players, excuse me, football players in the dance company. And Monday morning, I arrived at work, and some of the dancers in the company were, were there ready for me, w waiting for me, said, Mrs. Carr, that could be our friends, our dancers any weekend. And from that, it was just really a conversation, a campus-wide conversation about, okay, you tell me I'm too old to tell you not to do this. How are we going to, what are you going to do to um, make a contribution to your campus? And, and actually started in the choreography class, and it has just grown from there. I'm an old modern dancer, and in the modern modern dance in the in the 70s, when I was dancing professionally, 70s and 80s was really about social issues. So, so really for me, it was a natural. But I didn't know. I mean, who who would know that we have football players and track kids and drama kids and psychology majors all dancing together, and and working on this issue? I I didn't know. I just knew that I that we had to try something different. How are you thinking that um, presenting different art performances is going to impact students around the issue of drinking? Arts is a way that people around here haven't usually seen the issues talked about. This is not that artsy of an area, to tell you the truth. And then to be using that for some social issues, I think, is very different and kind of wakes people up, opens their eyes. How big a problem is drinking at Dickinson State and by extension to the area, this part of the state? Well, it has to do with the size of the school is one thing. Everybody knows everybody. So when one person's drinking or going out to a party, everybody knows everybody. It's kind of a group thing, you know. So it's everybody knows everybody. It's all involved. It, you know, that's how it gets so big, I think, is... So in other words, people feel like to fit in and to have friends and to have fun, you need to drink. Uh, the city I'm from, at least, there's more things geared to towards people our age, towards college students and high school students, and whereas here, I, I believe, from what I've seen, it's more just the bar is the only place to go, and like Shane said, it's more of a social aspect. If everybody's going, that's just where you go. So do you think because it's so pervasive, people even think of it as a problem or an issue that needs to be dealt with? I don't think people think of it as a problem. It's so woven into just the entire psyche of the area, I feel like, growing mm -hmm. up here. It's like you'd start drinking with your parents when you're 12 and such, and it's just kind of crazy that people don't realize, they don't know anything different. Amanda, mm -hmm. would you read one of the poems that you read in the performance this past September? Happily. <clears throat> Innocent Fine by Aaron Friedhoff. He tried opening his eyes, but everything is black. He opened his mouth, but could not speak. He could hear his mom crying next to him, but couldn't comfort her. He tried to reach out, but couldn't feel his arms. And he heard the doctor talking, but couldn't believe the words. 
He'd been walking home on a dimly lit street when a car sped around the corner, faster than he could blink. He may never walk again, he could hear the doctor say. He'll be lucky, lucky to wake from this deep sleep. He wanted to move, to scream, to cry, but he couldn't even take a breath. And then he heard the policeman say, the man in the car blew over the limit. I'm sorry, ma'am, about your son, and we'll make sure that he's brought to justice. He was sad and furious, confused. He had done nothing wrong. Why did this happen to him? His thoughts began drifting further away. He heard the machine start beeping, and his tr doctors tried everything, but couldn't stop the bleeding. His murderer still lived while he paid the ultimate price for someone else's choice to drink and drive. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your story and what happened to you? Um, well, a lot of people here may know, I guess, what happened. Uh, a few years ago, in the summertime, driving down a gravel road, uh, intoxicated, been drinking out at the lake or something like that, and uh, flipped my pickup end over end, got a jacket out the rear window. Uh, the pickup landed on top of me, and then it flipped again, launched me into the road, I don't know, probably 50, 60 yards, something like that, and that's where I was found. Um, injuries to come off that is I broke my jaw, um, split spleen, bruised lungs. Uh, I couldn't move my left arm for oh, six, seven months, um, and that's still in recovery. It, um, yeah, so that's what the accident, and that was because of alcohol. And, you know, what do you say when you something like that happens, you know? I mean, first thing you can do, your mom and dad walk up to the table thinking you're, we're going to die, you know. It's kind of a hard thing to say to them right away. You know, what do you say? And first note, you know, mom walked in and says, Mom, I'm sorry for putting you through this. And that was the first thing I wrote, you know. It's the only thing I could be was sorry. But anyhow, it goes, Mom, I'm sorry for putting you through this. No parent should ever have to see their kid in that state. Mom. I'm tougher than this, I'll be okay. No parent should ever have to hear from a doctor. We'll try our best to save your son. Mom, I'm tougher than this, I'll be okay. Jordan, I wanted to ask you, why did you become involved in alcohol awareness through the arts? I, I know what it's like to lose somebody to alcohol, and I just couldn't sit back and think that if I didn't say something, maybe somebody else could lose someone. So I felt that by speaking out and being involved, maybe, like Shane said, if we could just help one person, that would be enough. You wrote an essay for the project. Mm -hmm. Do you want to read a little part of that essay? Sure. Um, it's towards the very end. Um, my Uncle Mike will make me think. He will make me think before I get behind the wheel after drinking. He will make me think before I get in the car with someone who plans on driving drunk. He will make me think, not only for my sake, but for the sake of the people I would affect through my decisions. I will never understand why the driver lived and my uncle was killed. I do know that he will never be at my college graduation. I know that he will never be at any of his children's weddings or my own. I know that he will never meet any of his grandchildren or my children. We can't turn back time. We can't change what has happened, but we can try to heal by talking about it. And by talking about it, maybe we can prevent it from happening to someone else. This is how my family is trying to heal. Okay, I want to thank you all. My guests, Patty Carr, Shane Bennett, Ashley McGelkley. Jordan Dupuy and Amanda Leftridge, who are all members of Alcohol Awareness Through the Arts. Thank you so much for this wonderful conversation today. Thank you.